to be closer anyway. We'll give folks just about five minutes to show up before we start getting into it. Now, but if people show up late, so be it. The, of the British units in the chat. In the hashtag area at the top is that, that, is that the is that the Soviet uh, uh, info? Right here. The you mean this right here that I'm showing here? Is that what you were asking? You're seeing my screen, right? I've lost I've lost you, Tracy. Is that where the, the Brits are showing up? Well the, no, the at least according a picture mm, before or even after. Oh, the one with the carrier icons on them. Yeah. The, yeah, this this is yeah, the this is a general idea. Yes. Let me show you the I general mean, your general uh, intelligence is that they're oop, that's not right either not a circle a line there's another screen with the reason that, that one yes that one this is a presumed uh, I mean you know that they're coming from Ascension Island of course icon of the carrier is that where the Soviets telling us that might be yes exactly it's about 120 nautical miles to, uh, at 31 degrees true from Port Stanley um, at least that was the last known position right there could be some variance in that based on right so the, the carrier layer. that's on the screen is mine is not this is not in scale right now. We're, this oh. we we can move these around. Okay. Like you're probably more, and these are just. I'm gonna take these off. Okay, so the, the carrier icon on the screen is my carrier, not this. This one right. This is this is the 25th of May here. Oh, okay. And it's about, at least according to the way I was depicting okay. it on the other on the sim plot map, it's about like maybe more like that. Okay. Um, San Luis is roughly here. Um, according to the intelligence, it had detected some destroyers in this area and uh, had some misfiring and so forth. Um, these are not exactly in this area. You, you, the intelligence is that you have up to six British submarines in the in the immediate in, in potentially in the area, right? And then you, and they're known to have sent at least two nuclear. Um, uh, subsurface units into the area so you don't know the exact positions of any of these units okay you you are presuming that mm -hmm. there are british uh, subsurface nuclear submarines operating in the area right um okay yeah. so that's the are my, my my frigates and destroyers they they have asw yes they do they all have sonar so capability or, 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 let me show you on simplot it's probably it's a little, lack of air it's a little it's a little easier to probably show. They had lack of anti-air, so yeah. they, they must be concentrating on something else. I can show you what they have. Like for example, let's go look at um, some of the task group seventy-nine point four, which is they are they're older French uh, A sixty-nine Corvettes. Now the 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 one thing to notice is they do all have almost all have exoset which i think was not necessarily highlighted in a lot of history <laughs> right they had a pretty a pretty mm -hmm. substantial offensive surface uh capability um which i, I think has, has, has not yeah, really she, been heavily they just have to contact the target right exactly and survive and uh so forth um, the one thing i will say about the french uh a69s which are the three um Corvettes in that one, ta the one task group is that they do not, they have really poor air radar too. Um, at least those units. Um, their, you know, their surface capability is still roughly similar to most other destroyers in the area. Now, the nice thing about the nice thing about these units is they're small, right? And um, 
as opposed to these task groups, at least as originally depicted, they have larger units as their as their high value assets, right? And these are yes. these are more easily detectable, right? Um, as far as their mm -hmm. horizon, right? And we'll, we'll go through that a little bit. Let's take a closer look at the countermeasures. Um, let's go take a look at some of these in the front, the A69s, real quick. I just wanted to remind myself what ASW. Because I recall something about the uh, Israelis in the '73 war. They had a they had a shorter range uh, missile, but they waited for the uh, the Syrians or the Egyptians to fire and just sucked it up and waited for them to miss and then they got closer and fired <laughs> so I will point out that they had, they all had of, countermeasures. I mean all of these units do have sonars but yeah. I will point out that you have to get um <laughs> Especially... I see we have other players on. That's good. Hold on a second. Oh, we got a couple people. Hey, uh, hey, Steven, how are you doing? Hey, Ryan, how are you? You're both still muted if you're trying to talk. Okay, I think I figured it there out. There you go. Hey, Steven, how are you how are you doing? I'm doing well. Doing well. Uh, where's Where's the, the actual video feed? I, I don't it should see be, that. Uh, the video feed is on. It's literally on the channel. So if you click, if you click on Falklands Movinus, uh seminar room, and then ah, I found it. Yeah, there you go. And it, if at any time, okay, I got it. Yeah, if at any time it goes missing, tell me, because sometimes sometimes Discord goes a little funky, and it kind of undo undoes it for some reason. All right, so I was just okay. going. I was just going through a few things um, with Tracy for a moment. Um, we were talking through some of these units. We were talking through some of the units in the uh, Task Group 79.4, which are the A69 uh, Corvettes, the French Corvettes that are on the uh, Argentine Surface Forces. Um, what I was trying to point out there, and this is very similar to most of the or actually both both forces sonar's capability is that you have to get very very close <laughs> specifically with surface units um, now uh, the, the units that do have some of them do have um, helo capabilities with the uh, SW capabilities etc we'll, we'll point those out as we as we attempt to use them etc somebody has a train in the background yeah I hear that I, I kind of I don't know why but I like that sound uh, uh, it reminds me, <laughs> my grandparents had a train right here. Um, so I just wanted to kind of just, just kind of give you a real rough estimate of how Harpoon uh, shows range detections for passive and active sonar is. Uh, for passive, as you can see here, that's 1.1 nautical mile. You're gonna have to get pretty darn close, especially if you're if you're doing, if you're running low, um, doing silent and running deep. Then you, you, it, 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 you uh, very. Very low probabilities of detection. So um, now the way the way I kind of depict ASW operations, um, as you can kind of see here, um, it's not a hard and fast rule. But what I do is I give a, a certain probability. Like for example, if the twentieth of twenty fifth of May uh, task group, as originally defined, if it gets within um, eighteen. 19, 20 mile, nautical miles, that's when I would start to roll to see if you are getting any detections. And that would be an indication of them using their, their, their helos. Um, but I, they also have, and probably their best asset, right, as far as ASW, as well as uh, surface search capabilities, are, are their tracker uh, aircraft, right, their fixed wing their fixed wing launched aircraft. I think think they have four as depicted in this scenario. I need to go check that to make sure I'm saying that properly. Yeah, the S2 trackers, I think they had four on board. Yeah. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Here we go. Right there. 
Um, just I'll go. I'll start. Um, first of all, hello everybody. I should have introduced myself, uh, Peter Robbins. Of, um, I've I've been I've actually only been active in uh, modern naval war gaming for about a year now. On uh, I've been an, uh, a war gamer for probably thirty plus years on and off in various various genres, mostly Age of Sail, all the way through pre Dreadnoughts. Uh, that's where I stayed, and then just just last year I picked up Harpoon Five. And got very very interested in modern just modern uh, uh, missile age warfare in general, and I think I've I don't know kind of kind of fallen fallen for the topic um, as well, and and then of soon of course as soon as you as soon as you dip your feet into modern uh, naval war gaming, uh, the Falklands Malvinas conflict just kind of of course comes to the forefront as one of the one of the major conflicts in the past forty years, and that's kind of where I that's that's my background. Um, so let's go over the forces a little bit. Uh, what we're what we're depicting here is, of course, uh, uh, May first. Of course, um, it is fifteen thirty Zulu time. Um, of course, as as you may know, the British went by the Zulu time clock, and uh, the Argentine forces actually were using the local time zone clocks for for all their planning. Um, that did come into play at times historically. Uh, because the British forces were just a little bit more um, awake and aware and planning early in the day than, uh, than their Argentine counter counterparts. Um, in harpoon terms, the sea state is five, which is actually pretty um, a little uh, a little nasty, if you will. Um, the wind is at 270 true at 27 knots. Now, of course, historically, this is not true, right? Um, historically, the wind was actually quite Quite oddly, uh, not uh, available, and that 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 uh, was one of the linchpins as far as why the Argentine um, Skyhawks could not take off with full loads, right? Um, so, as a part of this scenario, this talk through this seminar game, uh, you don't have that impediment, right? You have a normal, at least starting at the start of this game, uh, you have a normal amount of wind for the area for the time period, right? All right, the ceiling um, for um, visibility is 3,000 meters broken, et cetera, et cetera. Visibility is 80%, which is pretty much normal from in harpoon terms, et cetera. Um, some things to note, and this is very important for just this conflict in general for both sides, is that there are no convergence zones available uh, within the TEZ, within the um, exclusion zone. And you can actually see why uh, in in the map itself. I I had originally gotten this map from um, owner, owner. I can't remember the can't remember the site. Hold on a second. Uh, well, I can't remember the terminology for this. Of course, now I don't. Whatever. Um, what this is is basically showing you the depth here, and these depths are in the in the order of um, uh, 150 to 200 meters tops, right? In order in order to get what they call convergence zones for um, basically either uh, bottom bounce uh, convergence and uh, basically extending your radar ranges by 30 nautical mile, mile uh, donut markers, if you will. Um, doesn't come into play until you hit some of the, the shelf over here, right? So what does that do? What does that do that that makes it very difficult to find each other, right? You're, you're not going to get um, um, you're not going to get kind of uh, the equivalent of, of a long range passive uh, light detection of an enemy su uh, subsurface unit unless you have uh, upwards of 2,000 meters of death. Or more, right? So neither side had convergence zones, and what that also does is there's a lot of low. Um, it's it's low death in, in general. So what that doesn't play very well to is the the nuclear the nuclear submarines, the attack subs of the British, right? So they have a difficult time 
using their normal tactics or they're using their um, you know North Atlantic tactics of going low, going very low and, and going very fast, right? Um, they of course um, can stay uh, submerged for long periods of time and not have to snorkel for recharging, etc. So there's a lot of benefits, of course, to being a, sub, a nuclear sub, but you don't get all of your benefits unless you can go away very quickly and very fast, which um, the nuclear subs were larger, too, physically, right? So, yeah, so pros and cons all throughout. Um, task force compositions. Let's go back over what you got. And again, this is the historical disposition. All right. And again, the plan here is to have, have y'all um, very generally give orders, standing orders for you know, pretty much hours on end, standing orders of what you would like to do with these task groups. All right. And I'm going to help you throughout. Don't feel nervous about knowing all the capabilities of everything. I'm going to have to look up everything too, mostly. Um, I've played this several times through. And um, so, but even then, I don't know it all. Uh, so just, just first things first, um, I was going to give a little bit of flexibility. Tracy, you had kind of asked a bit about starting positions and so forth. I was going to give a little bit of flexibility on your starting positions. Um, I'm going to let you all talk now for, for a start. Do you want to keep your task groups? Let's talk surface units first, OK? Would you like to keep your task groups intact in their historical starting? Uh, compositions or did you want to combine any task groups or at least keep them closer distance to one another um, the floor is yours as far as let's talk first again about surface units well the advantage of keeping them separate is that you're going to get you can get a multi-axis attack if you ever get decent targeting information <clears throat> the downside is is protecting them uh, because the British will have probably localized air security over the, the task groups if they're separated. Okay. Um, um, very good, Steve. Tracy, you were trying to talk had, as well. I had proposed... Uh, yeah, I, can you hear me? Yep, go ahead. Am I muted? No, you're, you're good. Yeah. I hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, I proposed uh, a different consolidated... I propose consolidating 79.1 and 79.4. All right, so what I'll, what I'll show you what we can do. There's there's alternatives. There's some alternatives to that. Let me sh let me show you what I can do within Simplot here too. To, uh, Port Stanley with a noisy mode is bait and the consolidated force would we're, we're losing you there a little yeah. bit Tracy I don't know Uh, let me give the floor to uh, Gordon, Robert, or Ryan. Did you have any input you wanted to give as far as um, surface task group compositions or dispositions? Yeah, the, is, are the Brits being run by an AI, or is there another team that we don't? Um, no, I'm I'm running the Brits by AI, by AI. Yeah, I've, is, I have is, I have standing are, are orders. The, is the UK being run by AI, or is there? I'm running the UK via via standing orders. So. Uh, real quick, uh, just uh, are we going to have any um, any issues with the amphibious uh, task group coming down, or is it just going to be us versus the British? Uh, we're playing in against the GM. So the um, the um, yeah, the amphibious task force won't be here for another about a, about seven to ten days at least. Yes, yeah, from Ascension Islands. Yeah. So it's it's not in the area of operations yet. There are amphibious, uh, there are known amphibious operations going on today. So what's the scale of the time scale of game? Uh, we this is real time. These these oh, so what's these the, time scale? the intermediate turns are thirty minutes. 
if we if we get down to the point where we need to depict a combat we'll we will drop down to three minute turns but the the turns okay, are so we're not going to days or, or a week no we're in, we're not this this will depict probably the first two to three days of the operations okay this, this, we'll see how good. far we go but i don't think that, i've never gotten past like the third day um given this format so Any other questions along that lines uh, before we continue? Oh, uh, yeah, I I didn't get to finish telling the other players, mm -hmm. but my idea was to consolidate the the carrier task force and the destroyer. Or, Corvette task force uh -huh. into a striking group in your right after the revealed known position of the British carrier with MCON and CAP. And the General Brown Grant Task Force would sweep south toward Port Stanley in noisy mode as bait. I'm okay with you um, if you wish to retask. The Brits would go after the bait and you can change the uh, disposition of the starting uh, point here as well within well, reason. Man, yeah. So, Stephen, do you agree or disagree with that disposition of combining those two task groups here? Yeah, that, that, that'd be fine with, uh, we might at some point, once we actually have contact, want to revisit that, but for right now, that'd be fine. It is. What I suggest for now is I can, um, first of all, Simplot kind of allows me to re reposition things before we start it, okay? So, again, this is the 25th of May. So, yes. Uh, so go, go ahead and consolidate 79.4 and, and 1. Okay, we, we'll treat them as uh, yeah, well, same plots. Okay. Um, now, what would you like to do? Um, I, I'm, I'm a little. Uh, um, no, it's actually May first. Yep, 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 yep. Where would you like to position the Belgrano group? And think you can think about it for a little bit before we start because we got we got plenty of time. <laughs> one one possibility is to put the the Belgrano actually. Yeah, the, the, I like the, I like the Belgrano a little bit closer to the Malvinas, and possibly we can actually put him in in the Sound, where he can sh quickly shift north or south, and get us that multi-axis attack. But he's also somewhat protected from submarines in there. Interesting. So you're thinking even of taking them, uh, so they'll obviously be coming probably from uh, from. Uh, from this area. I mean, yeah, I'm going to give a lot of leeway here as far as where you start. So the assumption is that the entire forces are starting from here. Um, you can skirt the Falklands here, and Malvinas, and just and go a little bit like like this way and come in here. Maybe even start start here. There's going to, I mean, you do you are aware. Um, I think I was speaking to Tracy before uh, everybody showed up. Um, um, you are aware there are there is of course British submarine operations in the, in the area, right? Uh, you're not you don't have exact intelligence. Uh, you do know that they could have up to six submarines in the operating area and or approaching it. Um, and of those, three to four would be um, subsurface uh, nuclear attack subs. Uh, so I just. I will say that, right? <laughs> okay, so um, 
so let's 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 talk this through then. Would ooh, don't want to delete it. Would you like then to maybe be more here and skirt the islands here and have a go at it that way? That was my original idea, but I'm liking uh, using the sound. Who, who's the gentleman that spoke, Stephen? I I like his idea better. Of now, the, 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 the the downside to the sound idea is that is that presumably they would be VID'd from Correct. observers on, on the sound and so it might ease the British charging problem and they could just sit you know a diesel boat outside the entrances so and bottle you in that's the downside the upside is that you can quickly shift Except for SAS I don't think there are any ground forces on, on the island yet. All right so right but but it's it, it, <clears throat> Without knowing, without knowing the game and the assumption, or theoretically, it could be just civilians and, and radioing in via shortwave, you know. But, but the, so, so these are these are things that I'm thinking about as a gamer. We can always reset to if something goes horribly wrong. I'm not against that either. <laughs> so, the whole point of this is to have a good well, conversation you know, about end, it. If the game ends too early, I would relinquish command with someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, both I think both ideas can be combined, right? I mean, you can um now are you saying that you're going to stay there or that you're going to try to navigate the sound yeah. and I, I think Steven was <laughs> Yeah, the, 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 link up with me. I think he wants to link up with me if he makes it through the sound. Well, what what we could do? What, what my idea is is it's mostly protect a, a weak ASW uh, force that's weak on ASW from submarines, uh, with the idea that once we have a a location for the British task group, sorting sorting out and attempting to do a multi-axis, it actually wouldn't link up with the carrier group at all. It'd be the, the, it, they have some surface uh, surface missiles on that task group, and the idea of getting a multi-axis threat. Uh, to the British, uh, uh, ideally, we'd get two axes for surface -to surface missiles and one axes for for air attack and do it simultaneous. Um, but in any case, until until such, it would protect that that task. Now we do risk being bottled up. Okay, and then that's the downside of this of this idea. Mm, bottled up. Well, the. Book. Belgrano would be bottled up, but the, the, the 25th of May is still out in open water. You, you would definitely distract them, let's say that, right? <laughs> You'd give them something to think about. I mean, That's another thing. So. Yeah, and, and the Belgrano, I, I thought, would be in noisy mode, whereas the... the Trying to be an income with the cat. Yeah. Also, I was here at Now, now, just to. Yeah. What what it would also do is it was conserve the Belgrano's fuel because it's 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 going to have. I'm not sure what the uh, what the the endurance is going to be at this point in the game. But the other thing we can do is we can mine. We can put anti-submarine mines outside so to kind of keep the the British diesel boats at bay a little, at least a little bit further out and that gives us a chance to do a high speed breakout um uh so that's if we have mines in our inventory it's, cruising. it's a world war ii cruiser so it should have plenty of well it's an old world war ii cruiser it had plenty of range well that's depending how well it is maintained and how much and how much it went to sea with so that's yeah but um but in any, in any case, it, it'd be moving slow in the sound, so it would it would definitely have probably range for a high speed run. Um, the, uh, the 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 I'd be talking about doing you know thirty knots on the way out out and approaching the and, and it won't have much range at that speed. It, it, it'll have a, you know a day or so, but um, so that's an idea. So if we have mines in our inventory, I, I, I'd go for the, the put it in the sound, mine the the uh, put anti submarine mines on the outside of the sound. And then uh, do a breakout once we have a targeting solution on the British task force. That's fine. If if we have mines, lay them. 
would agree with that. Yeah, they're not depicted in this scenario, but I, I'm, I'm more than willing to let you... I mean, they definitely had mines, and it was definitely a concern of the British uh, task force, so, yeah. Um, so you're saying to lay a mine field... I don't, I don't know if in 1980s technology they could be ASW-specific, but... Uh, but I, even, even moored mines would give a, a diesel boat something to think about there. Yeah. And so and I, I, may, the, I lay a minefield uh, both of them... Yeah, some of this can actually be pre-planned. I mean, some of this could be re pre-done before this scenario. So if you want to mm -hmm. try to lay that before the even the, the scenario start, I mean, they've they've had they've you know they've occupied the the islands for several weeks now, right? right? So yeah, um, it's month. it's not as it's Ralph not as necessary. But I can I can I can retro wave that as far as if you want to to lay mines here. Here, that's what you're talking about, or even deeper in here, you're talking yeah. about. These... Yeah, I'd, I'd lay I'd lay it at the at the southern and the northern entrance. Um, in a and uh, and yeah, and and even even if you didn't lay many, but you just you laid a few, and you just said we delayed a boatload, that's going to cause the British some some concern. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just at least depict this here. As, as long as you got plausible Let's deniability see. in what you've done. A news release: minefields have been laid. Yeah, just through, and that's that's going to cause the the British a little bit of concern uh, when it comes time to. Well, what you want to do is you you want to lay them at such a point that that when you do your breakout, the the British diesel boats are held far enough out that they can't get a decent shot. I'm just going to be very generically. So it'd probably be. It probably will be a little bit further out, just because what we're trying to do is trying to keep right the here. diesel boats, you know, twenty thousand yards, yeah, twenty thousand yards out or so. So they'll do a high speed breakout, and, and and they won't be able to get close enough at the time. Um, so we'll gener we'll generally uh, mark that for now, okay? Uh, but about twenty thousand yards out from each sound entrance, and obviously you all have right, instructions yeah. on where those are. <laughs> Hopefully, so that you don't run into them. Yeah, right, right. and. So that's fine. Is one of the players going to be the air boss and on the on the on the ground. Yeah, we can we can split and that up if you places. would like. With um, I don't know if Gordon everybody. Ryan. Is, is they, I mean, it's basically. I mean, Ryan and Gordon. Did you want to take on a specific role, or are you just listening in? I'll take that as they're just listening in. So, do you want to take? I wasn't in the mood to run the whole show. I just, you know, I wanted a cooperative game. Right. Um, Gordon and Ryan, last call for taking on. This. No, I'm just going to be an observer on this. Okay, that's fine. Maybe they're getting coffee or something. Why don't I um, why don't I help you plot out air? I'll give you I'll, I'll take some general some general guidance from you, but I'll I'll help you plot out air. Okay. Um, as far as the task groups, I, I would say between the two of you, I'd concentrate just on communicating together and and deciding what to do with the surface forces. Is that a, is that a reasonable idea for now? Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah. So. Um, so back to the. Yeah, do, we, do we have an idea, one idea for our lone submarine? Yeah, that was my next question. Um, again, they had had they had had destroyer contacts here. They had had a misfire of a sub uh, of a torpedo. Uh, the wire guidance uh, broke, and the firing uh, computer, I think, had fizzled at the time as well. Um, was not available to them. They had to basically try to do a uh, uh, basically a basically a bearing only launch for a torpedo um, failed and then they've lost contact but those last known contacts were in this area okay mm -hmm. now um, generally speaking maybe just give me a general pattern you'd like to use and what's really kind of nice about this is we can uh, we can lay out some waypoints if you want so um, I think obviously we, 
I, I don't know, I don't want to speak for you, but if you want to go in that general direction but not right at where you were, we can kind of lay out a just a pattern of something like this. You know, we can do anything as far as patterns. We can also set, uh, I'm just going to do a very basic pattern here. The assumption being is that you may want to strike again or I, I want to leave it to y'all. I mean, do, do you want to kind of make another go at this this axis of um, threat or you can go in another direction? Oh, we have Mark Flanagan here. Is he, is he uh... Hello there. Have I, did I manage? Have I managed to get the timings mixed up? Then has it already started? Yeah, we've yeah we've started. It's okay. You want to jump in? We haven't we haven't okay. really um we haven't let the waypoints go yet. So <laughs> so you're you're okay. more than conceptualizing. Um, okay. Do you have a do you have any preference over just like controlling air units or having having good a good say over sub a sub unit? Or? Um. I'm, if any preference, I would say air, but I'm happy to do anything, to be okay. perfectly honest. You're, are you are now dubbed the air officer. You're the air boss. <laughs> You're the air boss. <laughs> <laughs> of the entire Argentine command. It's okay. I'm here to help. I will okay. help throughout. All right. I, yeah. the, I, again, the the says, I'm on UK time, so I may flag towards the end. It's just coming up to midnight here. That's fine. Uh, but I'll... Uh, I'll play as long as I can and yeah. uh, just a, a shout out to Tracy there I saw you uh, around I meant, to, I, meant, uh, I meant to say hello there fond memories from the last connections oh lovely alright so we were just kind of just going through a rough plotting of, uh, real real quick Peter mm -hmm. uh, what, the, what is the air time just for, for reference uh, for the Canberra's coming out of uh, that northern airfield uh, the, uh, way, the air time for that to say Port Stanley. Yeah, okay. Uh, that is, let's see, we are from here to Port Stanley is about three, literally 300 nautical miles. Um, let me see. About two hours? That's about, mm, that's about right. Let's go look at the Canberra stats. I don't have it memorized, sorry. Um, and, 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 and they're, they're, they're just iron bombs. Uh, yeah, as depicted. They're not, in the scenario, they're not yeah. yeah, these aren't these right. aren't like the high altitude reconnaissance ones that the British wanted to use, right? Um, which actually would be interesting in this game if the Argentine had forces had the reconnaissance version of this. I don't know. Is this the reconnaissance version of it? No, or the high altitude one? No, it's not. It's it's got hard um, dumb bombs basically. These are okay. Yeah, that's yeah. That just yeah. just just. And its endurance is no no problems. We got about uh, about forever. Yeah, these guys these guys can go way off the map basically and and go home easily. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Hold on. The one thing I did want to look at was the so speed. so but they just need they need two hours uh, transit time, and they're equipped with iron bombs. You got six. Actually, of them. I mean they're pretty speedy actually. Even in even I don't know if that's accurate, but. They're saying 350 knots. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, cruise. Yeah. Okay. It, it was, that'd be about right. Okay, yeah, that'd be right for for a turbojet. Yeah, that'd be about um, right. So be, yeah, about two hours, right? So in other words, if you wanted, okay. the way I did this here, I just because I just so I didn't have to depict the entire <laughs> the entire coast of Argentina, right? So it's about probably an hour to get here, and then it's about an hour to get down there, right? So, so call it two hours from the time yeah. that from from takeoff to to time on top. Mm -hmm. And let's make a good note of that. Somebody, hold on, I lost my notebook here. A second. Somebody make a really okay. That good was note that was just for the benefits of the group. Mm -hmm. So silly statement. They've been trained in in, in vessel recognition, and we won't be taking. Um, you hope, yes. <laughs> uh, could be a good idea to not have them do high high altitude uh, dumb bombing, but um, uh, that, that we was do have two Type Forty Twos ourselves, which is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> right. Oh, in this group, in the twenty fifth of May group, is that what you're saying? Yeah. I was just saying that the, the Royal we sold. The Argentines to uh, 42s. Yeah. yeah, those are in this this group right here. Um, 
All right, so we've depicted a little bit of this waypointing. Let me show you that this is actually really cool because it, um, this program will actually let you set the knots. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just say that they're about a... Just, just for the sake of, uh, for the submarine, I'd, I'd recommend we keep it roughly 100, 125 miles off of Port Stanley. And because the wind is coming from the west, right, um, probably the Brits will be, will be running just to, to catch the wind for their carriers. They'll probably be running, uh, running as far to the east as they can. For, and then coming back to the west, so I, I actually moved the the patrol box a little bit further to the east. This way, right? Just to... because they're going to be running as far as the east to 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 lengthen the range from the land bases, and they'll be running to the west to to catch the wind. Uh, but with that twenty seven knot wind, they aren't going to need much. So I actually moved the patrol box a little bit further to the uh, to the uh, east. I think I've found a bug. Hold on a second. Why is that not? That's not fun. Yeah, that looks a lot right. That looks like about a hundred to hundred and twenty miles see off. If I can... The north of the. You know. Yeah, my, my my thinking is that they're going to do ground support or ground strikes, and that'll be about right. I think that'll be right about right for the Harrier. Uh, so. Somehow I got a copy of the unit right on top of it. That was weird. All right, um, sorry about that. But what's really kind of neat, neat about this app is you can, um, obviously you can set any number of waypoints, but it's really it's a really cool app. Um, and you'll see some other cool things in a moment. But um, you can actually move each individual waypoint. So this is roughly the equivalent of the command application, if any of you have used that in your professional... So you wanted this over a little bit further like this, or is this too far? No, that would that, that be, I, I, yeah, I think that would be about right. It, it, it's, uh, uh, and I'm just kind of going off of, of memory and guesstimate here. I think about 100 to 125 miles off Port Stanley, that that give the Harriers a decent range with a, with a full load. All right, so what we can do here as well is we can, I can use this, this, this nice functionality where I can, um, this is a little closer than that. Do you want this more this way? Oh, that'd be a little closer. Yeah, I'd, I'd move it. I'd move it to the northeast then. Okay. Move the whole. Yeah. yeah that's fine. Is that a noisy diesel engine in the back? <laughs> I got. Is that a, a little bit better? Nice sound of. Something more along that line. No, I thought it was for effect. <laughs> I don't. Know, I don't know. Am I breathing heavy? <laughs> yeah. That that that'd probably be about right. Okay. And if for any reason, while we when we go through it, if we need to adjust it, we can. All right. Um, now, uh, let's talk Belgrano again. As far as your patrolling. Um, you've accomplished what you took part in the, the, the mine laying. Let's go ahead and relocate. You you can locate anywhere in this area you want. I would not maybe go further than this without plotting. Um, let's go ahead and just plot you from here. Any, where would you like to go? Yeah, I, I was thinking about sticking it actually in the sound. Oh, okay. And then and then what happens is if when we do a breakout, we, we break out to the northeast, probably because that's where we're going to find the carriers. So this gives us a little bit of protection from the uh, from the uh, from the British aircraft. Uh, it's but it, more importantly, it gives us protection from the subs. Okay, hopefully this will let me. Okay, I like your thinking then. All right, so it's the idea to kind of slowly to slowly go up to here. I right. Captain Lando is going to join this. Would you, would you like yeah, I'd, I'd actually just just stick her in the sound and have her have her motor around there, and, and the Brits are even if they know she's there, they, it's they've they've got to they got to close her and attack her, and as as the Argentinians found in the sound, that's that's not <laughs> it is 
It's it's taking it's maximizing our AA fire, our anti-aircraft fire, but more importantly, it's keeping us safe from the subs because we got the entrances mined. Mm. Okay, so I'm gonna let. And and then we'll just break out to the northeast for a missile attack at high speed, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, if we keep our speed high, we'll avoid the diesel boats being able to intercept. Now, if there's a nuke out there, then we got an issue. Uh, mm. But um, I'm just gonna kind of roughly. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, it's an interesting yeah. uh, alternative strategy there because yeah. there was a book called Razor's Edge, which pointed out that you could have done the the um, the Canopus strategy from World War One was actually have the Belgrano in Port Stanley, and it was as a harder target to hit mm -hmm. the runway as it would be uh, the Belgrano, and it's six inch guns as it were 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 quite a range but that seems a little bit kind of a sore thumb asking for it i like your strategy of through the sound let's see where we end up about how fast i well, i don't think you can floor it through there um i'm gonna say uh you know judge with me here i don't really think you're gonna want to go oh probably probably you know five seven knots you don't have to yeah. go fast because matter of fact you don't want to because you, you you want to, to conserve your fuel because you're gonna be making a high speed run and and the the fuel consumption of a ship like that at high speed it just it sucks the diesel so i will just for i'm gonna go ahead and just set seven knots on the dfm here. i'm gonna set seven knots through but let's take a look at what that actually represents and we can adjust it here in a moment I'd say let's let's uh, for your sake plot plot these task groups and then see where they're going to end up together. Okay. Okay. I'll be um, ready. Yeah. Well, basically, my 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 plan. I'll be ready. My my plan my plan would be to just have her sit there until we got a, a a good a good target, then have her come out because she's she has um, I can't think what the surface surface missile they had. Um, yeah, they have a sea cat. Um, hold on. The Belgrano. They had sea cat, but they had uh, yeah Belgrano had. Or somebody in the task group had. Well, they both have Exocet. The other, the other Fram two. Yeah, Exocet, right? Yeah, yeah the Fram two. Uh, they had Exocets, right? Yeah. So, but, so they, it's, but it's, it's the Exocets I want. Right. What was interesting was the Belgrano had Seacat, which I, uh, before I looked at this scenario and, and the unit closely, I, I I didn't even realize they had Seacat, honestly. Um, which I will call See, out is Sea Skim capable. So some some things to kind of keep in mind are yeah uh, let's like for example you do have the type 42s with with the 25th of may but there's there's a minimum of low altitude on the sea darts right um they were not sea skim capable so i just i did want to call that out to you as well um which can give you problems against potentially low flying exocet for example right um and or low flying, um, very low flying uh, air units potentially. Um, anything else you want to look at here while I'm still here? Yeah. So, go ahead. No, kind of, kind of what my concept of operations is 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 we'll we'll break off at once we get a good targeting solution, we'll break off the surface surface missile capable ships from the carrier group, and have the Belgrano make a high speed uh, run, while the Skyhawks uh, from the um, Carrier, okay. and and if we could possibly get any land base there like the Canberra come in, so we got at least three axes going uh, on the Brits, and uh, and hopefully something will be hit. Okay. Now that's going to take a lot of coordination, and I don't know the Argentines are really capable of that. Well, but um, yeah, I'm gonna. This, yeah, this that, is that's an, part this of the, ideal slope. That's built into the scenario is that you can have any any level of coordination that you you want. Yeah. They they didn't historically, but that's fine. That that's the that's the whole point of this. Yeah, I don't, I don't really practice anything like that. <laughs> um. All right, so this is laid. This is plotted out all the way. And what's nice about this is it actually tells you when it's going to arrive. There. <laughs> so the San Luis will arrive at its last waypoint on May second, early morning, which actually is probably good, right? That's something to also think, consider as well, the visibility as you get to your final waypoints and, and so on and so forth. Um, so that, that I think, is a good thing. And then she can just come up, and she can come up to, to communication depth at the end of that course and, and get new orders. Correct, absolutely. Um, and we will use that as a standing order if, 
for some re if for some reason you want to stop me at any point and, and go to periscope death and do it that's fine but that's that's probably a, as good a time as any to do it it's early in the morning um, how Very would you like how would you like to task these this combined task group here just in general just I'll make a beeline for this area just come this way you do anything oh, I, I'm back no what, what? go ahead What's the distance there between them? Between from here to to right, like here. To to yeah, to, to about where the end of the sub. Uh, just to give an idea, that looks like about two hundred. Yeah, I can also. Does this? No, I can also. Every once in a while, I can turn on the grid if that helps you at all. This this is. Oh, yeah, this the is, scale's helpful. Yes. You want that on there? Okay, that's fine. I didn't. Okay. I didn't yeah. yeah. I didn't know so it was we're looking about how many nautical miles? One hundred forty-three. Well, that's not. You know what? I actually even. Let's see, 143. That's gonna be five hours. That's gonna be four hours of steaming the missile range at high speed. That's I wouldn't have them go any further to the east because I want I want them to stay away from the British carriers to the extent they can until we have that. a. I'm gonna change well, until we have a fish. No, I, I I wouldn't have the 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 Argentinian carriers go any further to the east. Is that, a that, better? that keeps them within land range. Um. And and once they they get a once they get a, uh, a once we get a position on the British carriers, then we can talk about how how to steam. But I, I think that's far enough east for the carrier group right now. I wouldn't have them go go any further east. Okay, so do you want to make like a beeline to the north of San Luis? No, I I I I I just I'd go actually west. I'd go west and just kind of orbit at, at, at reasonably slow speed. I want to stay in that area, but I don't want to go any further to the east. You want to stay in this area? Yeah, or, or to the west of that. Okay. Let's, okay. Uh, let me... Uh, because right now... Let me uh, ask the floor. Do you agree? Tracy, do you... Are you comfortable so, with that? So you're saying you don't want to, you don't want to go after using your surface-to-surface -surface missiles? Because that was my no, no. For, until we have a target, right. no. Until we have a targeting right. solution, right? Well, but here's, but here's once thing, once we get once when you once say we get targeting. in range, then we'll have a target. Yeah, you want a detection. Right. Your, you're your asking. missile range right. is only like twenty five. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 yeah, I want a detection. Then we'll make the run. Okay. Well, we can see. I don't want to. I don't want to. So you're saying you just want more intel? Because right, right now, right, here's the thing. Where I'm at right now, I'm probably not going to be detected by the British, okay? He's not going to send out any. Probably, if he does, we can have in talk because it'll be just MPA. Um, so I'm safe there. If I get a whole lot closer, I'm opening myself up. Once we get a, a detection, once we have a, a position that I can start moving ships towards, then yeah, then we'll make the high speed run. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna point out a few things. For, for okay, as long as it's high speed. Um, as far as surface detection capabilities of this unit, let's go look at Belgrano. I think we still have it on here. But again, you're, the SS radar capabilities of these ships are not extraordinarily long. Um, for example, it's like but I, I I have trackers and I should have. Yeah, exactly. Are there any electros or anything like that out of? No, but you have plenty. You have trackers and you have helos and you have you can even use right. land land based air units if you really wanted to uh, get get interesting with it as far as setting up long range caps. And well, so that's forth. what I thought the Comberas could be used for because yeah, mm -hmm. they're not much good for anything else. I did want to show I mean, just, you. Just like the old uh, midway scenario where you had. Water planes flying about. This actually is probably this is probably relatively similar to other ships. Is there too. the 707 that was bugging the uh, Brits? Uh, no, not depicted in this scenario. I know exactly what you're talking about, but no. Yeah, they they bugged out after they uh, <laughs> got buzzed by the Harrier, right? Mm. <laughs> They've bugged out. No, no. I um, it's not available for this scenario. This is kind of like a simplified scenario, but uh, that's a good. It's a good suggestion. Um. So the Canberra will not get to this point until about an hour later. So what we're going to want to do is run through 
two half hour segments and then bring in. But they the can be used for spotter planes. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and plot out What's, here. What, what, like. Go ahead. What's the radar on the Canberra like? Uh, let's take a look. The surface to the air to surface. I don't know if they had any. They did not have surface. They so they're, they're using just the eyeballs. As a matter of fact, yeah, it's totally eyeball. Mark one eyeball. Mm -hmm. Okay. No countermeasures either. So what we need to do is we need to, we'll need to send up a tracker because they had a radar. Correct. Again, very similar to the surface search capabilities of other units, too. You, oop, that's not it. <laughs> um, yeah, so against even, you know, the largest targets on the, the British task force are probably considered medium, right? So, again, you're talking um, this. Well, that sucks. Yeah, it does. Uh, now, of course, you have you have plenty of you would have plenty of radar line of sight, um, but the the, yeah. S, the SS capabilities Boy, that are, not, are not wonderful. But you have four of them. Yeah. Um, do we have a Neptune? Yeah, well, I'm gonna need them because they're gonna get shot down. You do not have a Neptune depicted in this. Okay. Scenario, no. Again. Yeah, they're gonna get not, shot down. Um. Well, they, they got to find. They would need to have too. Skyhawk escort. You can yeah, they, they, they have to have a Skyhawk to escort them or something like that. We could do that. Uh, we could uh, time escorts from just San Julian if you want. If you want to not use your um, Skyhawks off the 25th. Or, I mean, you could... I think the 25th, we that's our... Piece yeah, you, to resistance those boys. Yeah, I feel like I feel you like they're already loaded with um, they're already loaded with their full um, bonsai night, uh, <laughs> as they called it. The snakes, they're they're ready yeah, to that's, go. That, well, so yeah, but we if have you want to do to, that because probably they're the ones who. All right, let's go ahead and pull ahead. in. Let me show you how you can do this. Is actually kind of neat too. You can import units here. We're gonna pull in. From San Julian, a Skyhawk unit. Um, what? Uh, how many escort would you like? Uh, you need at least two on a flight just to just to keep the Harriers off of them. Mm. You need a flight of two, a minimum of flight of two. Because you only have yeah, the Harriers are going to come in pairs, begin. aren't they? You only have eight to begin with. Yeah, so and, and the whole idea is just to let the tracker get away. There's more than eight. There's 16 of them on this land base. So we're oh well. Plus the range on those is such that they aren't gonna they're gonna have much uh, orbit time. Right. They do have refuel probes, which is something caught as well. And you do. Do I have, have refueling? Yes, you do have. Do, case, you do, do have, I have tankers? tankers. Yep. All right. So, we su so I'm gonna I'm gonna lay out and, and the daggers. I'll lay out a suggestion. The dagger is a very capable um, high altitude aircraft. That's the um, Israeli, basically the equivalent of the Israeli Mirage Five, I believe. Yeah. Oh, I, th I was thinking of an old F-102. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, these these daggers are basically it's an, it's a different name for the Israeli Mirage Five, so they're actually they're better than the Mirage Threes down here in Rio. Really? Yeah, maybe use the maybe use the daggers. Okay. What are they? Are they equipped with uh, sidewinders? I do not think so, but let's take a look. Well, by the way, um, Mark, I, I did take the trouble of uh, opening a, a never-before-refrigerated Boddington pub ale in, in recognition of your presence. <laughs> Excellent. They have pretty capable air-to-air. Uh, -air. They're Shafirs. They're the Israeli. Uh, it's basically the Israeli equivalent of an AIM-9. Um, it's infrared. It has an infrared uh, homing device. It's first-gen. So it's the equivalent. Of yeah, that, that, that'd be a better... Yeah, 
a flight of two of those and then and then have air day refueling uh, west of the task force. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to get out of this. I'm not going to use this right now. My memory is getting leaked from that. All right, sorry. Um, tabletop simulator is wonderful and all, but it does. it's just a little bit cumbersome and we're going to plot them here anyway. So. I like the dagger combination in the area that you're fighting there because you'll be high altitude. The missile that they have is twice, can fire twice as uh, the range of the Sidewinder, which should put the Harrier at a disadvantage. Over the Malvinas, it was different. Over the Falcons, yes. it was different. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to allow you to re. Where would you like to reposition your northern tanker? You have two tankers. Uh, two KC-130, I think they're H's. Um, so I was thinking just for, just, you know, just, you want it, like, right about here so you can reuse it for other units as well? Just you tell me what you want. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be fine. Something like about that, and let's see how much that is. That's what, I mean, what they... Yeah. What they historically would do is they would camp the tankers right outside the t the, the exclusion zone. If you've ever seen maps of what they were doing, and mm -hmm. the uh, the Super Eight Indars that um, you know did the Sheffield attack, they actually refueled within about 150 nautical miles. If you've ever seen kind of like plot points of what they did, I'll show you a couple things here in a minute. But um, yeah, so we can do that. And honestly, well. You kind of still want them kind of here if you want. To. We don't need their tanker. Just yeah, the, the the whole idea of this tanker is just to 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 stay airborne and refuel the the cap of the trackers until we get a targeting or right. A, but a I detection. I kind of want to let you decide where you want their station to be. Right? Where where would you like their station to be? Is this okay for you? Yeah, that that would be approximately correct. I think that'd, that'd be fine. I mean, we can always good. move the station. Yeah, you can always make yeah. a move. I just wanted to give you at least a free move if you will. All right. Um, okay. Okay. So, for timing sake, I'm not gonna. For timing sake, these daggers are taking off at the appropriate. Just, just it's gonna be hard for me to compute in my head when they're gonna meet these guys. So the intention is that you're gonna meet right about here, correct? Or right. Even at that point. Uh, and, and then. Uh, I tell you what. I'm and gonna escort them in, and. I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually relocate them. The uh, just for quick simulation mm -hmm. sake, you're not going to get taken down by any Harriers next to your coast. Okay, all right. So yeah, then, no, I'm um, not there. So. I'm going to put your I'm going to put your Canberras here, but they're not going to move until the hour mark. Okay, just just so we don't forget them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, as a matter of fact, I should be. And to... and we'll probably I would I recommend we launch it to, uh, just because if those are our eyeball if those Canberras are using their eyeballs, we may want to have a. At the same time, a, a tracker up just to use his radar. It's it's better than an eyeball. And how many Canberra did you want? You can use all of them. You can even use all of them and split you know, them up. I mean, you can even split the flight later if you really it, wanted to. I, I would actually split the flight, and here's why: because even if even if they're ineffective as as, as an anti-ship platform, still having a, a, a multi-axis threat coming from that direction is going to require the British to respond. Yeah, you're basically giving them targets. I mean, <laughs> I'm giving them targets. Yeah, you don't want to make this a kamikaze so, uh, effort, let's say. But uh, you know, hey, you got seven days to play with. I think you're going to take a little bit more risk, right? It gives me, it gives me, <laughs> right? It gives me one more, one more angle to 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 attack the task group. So I, I would say probably only you know two Canberras and leave the other four for uh, you know two elements for uh, for a strike, and use a tracker at the same time as the two search Canberras. And the Antarctic can hopefully cover both, and you know. Would you like um, them to be? Let's see where. Okay, let's talk timing here a little bit. You're at 1:30 GMT on day one. Um, I'm. I, do you want me to go ahead and lay those out here, uh, if you will, and then we'll just do like a a, a delayed flight. Um, so you're saying on the, the yeah. on the initial f combined flight, you wanted two daggers and two Kimbera, right? So let me go ahead and just get that out here. Let me call them Canberra 1 and 2. And, okay. Let's see if we got this. Let's modify this and call it that. Uh, okay. Okay, 
so you got two Canberra and the Skyhawk. This is basically one combined uh, sortie. All right, and and coming in from the same general angle mm -hmm. is going to be is going to be the, coming in from the same general angle mm -hmm. at the same time is going to be a, a tracker, um, and uh, no, with its radar on, and, okay. and and the the and the the, the dagger is going to be emitting too, and you know, hopefully somebody will live, and live to report me, the, the 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 trackers are on are physically on the twenty fifth of May. Is that is that what you're referring to? Yeah, one's one's gonna have to one's gonna have to take off and 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 try to do uh, and try to do a uh, at the same time as the Canberras to try because somebody they're they're gonna take some losses. Um, so at the same time that the Canberras are over target, I want the the tracker over target. Okay, so hour uh, an hour from now, these guys are meeting here and then starting to move. And then that's probably right. we'll have to just stop time. We might even just do three minute increments and to make it work at that point. Um, let us. And at, so I think we're safe to do two tactical turns. These task groups are not going to move for an hour. Is that correct? Basically, basically they're going to be mod locked. Essentially, okay, so mod locked. So let's do let's do this as um, harpoon tact uh, intermediate turns. Excuse me. So what's going to happen, and what you will see here, um, is what's actually what's pretty cool about this is that I could I, I could do it as a real time a real time run of this, but um, I'm going to do it instantly instead, right? So it's actually like a real time real uh, uh, in, a play playback, if you will. But let's just advance the time, and what this will do is this is actually going to advance the sub, and it's so going we're to actually advance. starting the. Uh the event at this moment. All right, so before before I let time go, <laughs> right, before we continue in actual game time, do you want me to adjust anything before we before we let it go? I think we pretty much had it set. Okay. If the air boss had... Now, I was away for a few moments. I, I'm sure the air boss had set his uh, land aircraft to do tasks. Yes, he, he. I'm not really sure. We well, we got some Canberras, but until we actually have a until we actually have a, a location, I don't know. We can do much else with the aircraft. And they go. I mean, is it possible? Is it possible to relocate some Skyhawks and support Stanley, or is that not allowed? No, they, they, the the airfield is not long okay. enough to support them. I mean, what you can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll just give you some hints here. I mean, what you could do is kind of get a few flights up. A couple of flights up, just on point, near the near your stations. But then again, do you potentially want to give away where your stations are at? You, you know, you know. Get so. Um, I mean, we could. Yeah. You could go ahead and get some flights out for for further tasking. I mean, we could put but, a cap. We, we could put a cap over uh, over the aircraft carrier. You know, right. But, that's that's. Uh, uh, um, the way I the way I judge that. Is I'm assuming you're going to do that, um, and, and meaning that if any if any enemy air units come within this cap range, there's going to be there's going to be just if you gen if you want me to just kind of run a general cap, I'll just I'll run a general cap for. And, and don't for forget the, you had the Enten guards. That, you had Enten guards at the uh, Rio Grande, which Correct. was the the uh, Terra de Fuego. Correct, and obviously yeah, the, uh, these are powerful. You do want to know where they're at before you task that, I would say. Right. Just as a. Mm -hmm. we, we right. Want to make sure everyone's aware. Yeah. And. You have now, a pretty good amount of forces. As far as here. MCON policy. Go ahead. Yeah. As far as MCON policy, um, uh, what do people suggest? I, I would, uh, I would suggest. Um, I originally stated I wanted the 25th of May to be an MCON, but the General Belgrano could be noisy because to attract itself as a target, as bait. Yeah, the 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 pro. Uh, let's let's see. Do we have? Well, first of all, does it, it doesn't really need to even need to be bait at this point? Um, although it could it be later, but we. 
Yeah. Do, do we, we have radars at Stanley that could be emitting, right? Air radars? Certainly. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are some okay. basic air ra radar capabilities, especially uh, using the heights nearby. Um, yeah, so so Belgrano can the the Belgrano SAG can be can be an MCON Alpha, um, and now and as far as the as far as the twenty fifth uh, May task group. We want a, a radar picket, and everybody else being alpha. There's a fram. There's a fram there, right? That in that this, we could in this task expand group, yes, if need be. Think. Yeah. In, yeah. There's a fram too. I was thinking, I was thinking of MCON and, and you doing being passive. But and let me just give you. A we 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 could do that too. Here's some here's some of your generic error radar ranges on that in that task group, and it's they have they have much better air air units than the French A69s. So, and again, you have to factor in uh, radar line of sight as well, which I'll show you a chart for here in a little bit too. Um, but generally speaking, this tells you how far out you can detect physically detect an air unit by the size of the of the target. Again, you have to keep you have to keep in mind the um, um, air radar line of sight. Let me get that for you. I actually have that in here. Give me one second. <clears throat> well, there on the ocean is going to be effectively. Um, Let me show you. Kind of peel the. I'm going to peel the onion back just for one minute, and then I'll put the onion layer back. <clears throat> Why is it not showing up? There it is. All right. So let me give you a little bit of a. Many of you probably already know the, the, the physics behind this. I, I don't want to assume or not assume. But um, depending on where you're at, like, so for example, if the 25th of May itself was the observer, um, so they are a medium observing unit. Most of your other units are small, so we, let's go with small. Um, so if you're small and you're looking at somebody who is at a low altitude, um, you have a range of approximately 60 nautical miles. Most aircraft operate within low or medium elevation. Um, v low is where the attendards were at before they popped up, if that gives you kind of an indicator. Um, so picking up a V low target, like if a super attendard was coming at you, uh, you in the Sheffield, um, you're not going to, you have like a 22 nautical mile range. So I just want to kind of give you a better idea. So if you see ship data in what I sent or gave you a link for, like for example against a medium air target, you can see it up to 124 nautical miles, but again, you, hold on, but, but you can't see it if, uh, more than 60 nautical miles if it's at low altitude. So just, just some little things to keep in mind. Okay? Right. Just, just I'll, so, I'll always so, go back to that if you want to go look at it. But all right, <clears throat> yeah, no problem. Uh, so, so for the purpose of, do we want to, to, to set up a radar picket or just have everybody in MCON Alpha for right now? Probably right now, since we, we know we haven't been detected, MCON Alpha will be fine. So, which ships are going active? Uh, no, no, MCON Alpha would be everybody's quiet. Anything is Belgrano doing anything actively, or anything to make a more of a noise or anything? I, I don't think there's anything. I don't think there's any need to. Okay. All right. Does anybody I, have any suggestions on that? I think the only thing you've got to worry about is two uh, subs out there. Com that was yeah. Right. right. I, 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 yeah. That's if they if they actually are. are, are yeah, this could be a very short trip if, they, yes. if they're sitting outside the, the northern. Uh, <laughs> All right, so <laughs> the northern uh, exit. <laughs> I, I can deal. I can deal with, with diesels, but if, if the if the if the nukes are out there, then then this plan is a miserable failure. Okay, so um, just well, there's a certain amount of risk. So I at the kind of thing I'm willing to take. Is there anything? Is there anything else you want out and about within the first hour? 
because I'm going to go ahead and go for it now. Uh, yeah, ASW standard ASW patrols, but okay, yeah, that's, that's as far that, as uh, trackers and already kind of, I'm already dep you're, nobody's going to absolutely creep up on you either of these, and you have San Luis here as, as well protecting you. Um, the your task you're tasking one tracker specifically, but what I'm also giving you is a general ASW cone here, right? Do you want to adjust? Do you want to adjust okay. the range of your tracking? Um, what's kind of neat here is I can just I can try to uh, rearrange this for the tracker. Do we want to keep the other? Do, do we want the other trackers on ASW duty? Mm. Just go ahead and assume. I, I'd be worried about about. Yeah, so I, I think so for right now. Yeah. Maybe. Anybody have any different thoughts? A suggestion. Basically, their their, their whole idea is to. Yeah, that's that's a, what sixty miles out. No, this is a hundred nautical miles out. You can you can you can shorten. Oh, that's that's right. probably too far because, yeah, I'd shorten it because we're that way we can concentrate on the area. And what about? Um, let me turn off this cap because you're not using them for cap, are you? So let's turn that off. Okay, so you're actively doing. You're actively sending out your helos as you can. Um, I'll I will depict that behind the scenes. Um, you're actively sending out your trackers, but let's go ahead and shorten this. Other than the yeah, one, so the, the one tracker, the one tracker you're act you're you're providing waypoints to. But, okay. But the problem with carrier mm -hmm. cap is you need some you need some uh, FM at least some FM radio to, to to land and take off your aircraft, so that would take out out of any time. Yeah, I'm not sure how good the Argentinian pilots were as far as uh, doing, uh, um, you know, and then I don't know. I, they, they made, I, don't, I don't know if they were able to do it without uh, and still remain an MCON. Okay. Um, so another thing about the blindness of this, I think uh, just timing-wise or just, just game time-wise, at about... Uh, the half hour mark here I'm gonna remove the blinders um, but and just for the sake of time because we have about an hour left right <laughs> so I don't um, I didn't expect yeah, us to get extraordinarily <laughs> long in this but um, about 730 or so I will unblind it and kind of give you an idea where things are at but but what we'll do at that point is we'll okay we'll what we'll do is we'll we'll judge it based on you not knowing they're there, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to mutually judge it at that point. I just kind of want to get have you get a feel okay. for where they're at, and we'll, we'll go. I just don't want to run out of time. All right, um, I think you have a good plan. Um, it's uh, I don't think I've ever heard anybody... I, I, I remember having this thought once, but this is the first time I've had a player do this, and I'm, I'm very interested to see what happens here. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and just put it an hour forward so that we can start moving mm. things. All right, so... That is an hour of movement. Not much. These guys are staying put. These guys are making their way here. That's a half an hour. Uh, we're going to do another one. As you can see, they're moving through. It takes a while, right? Um, at this point, we are we are judging that the these air units can start to be moved. Correct. At, I think that it will take... We'll see how long it's going to take, but you wanted one of your trackers to basically take off as these guys were moving past is that correct i just want to make sure I... pretty much right right and and the tracker will hopefully with this radar be able to yeah, that's just a tough target to see and with with eyeballs so um so i think having the tracker up and pretty much the same the coming in at the coming in with its radar will the idea is it'll both divert the Harriers, but it also has the best chance of seeing anybody and getting at least a, a general position before it gets shot down. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and plot these to, to this point, and we'll see what time what time it gets to be. Um, this is the Camp Bear, which is 360 knots, I believe. We just wanted them to Do make we? a beeline this way, is that right? Lisa, do we have any... Yeah, pretty much. Like a, a, a seeking out of Stanley that could be on a recon? Um, no, not prov not as provided in the scenario now. Okay. 
one thing the Argentines did not do was to put out a forward operating base on. The now you do have Sea Kings. You do have Sea Kings on the 25th, and I will show you that in a moment. In case you want to, in case you want to retrace, re, re, um, task individual ASW helicopters for AS for air search potential. That is that is a viable option too. Okay. But I don't think I like they're going to have the legs at that range. No, uh, I think they should be looking for subs. Yeah. Otherwise, every time you do that, I'm going to make that circle smaller. Is way of is that, mm -hmm. that's how that. That's generally how that would be. All right. So you want this unit to come here. Is this generally accurate? Where do you want them to end up? This the Canberra Skyhawk. Um. Uh. I would actually want them to be kind of tracking now pretty much due west. I'm uh, correcting, correct, due east. What about like that or even from there? Just mm -hmm. like this? Yeah, about about like that. About like that, yeah. Let's see where we're at here time-wise. These guys are going... We're obviously going to go at the speed of the Canberra. Uh, I'm not going to... Let's just say uh, which... Which altitude band do you wish to be in? Um, again, um, let's see. I can't even remember the exact. Uh, see, so ten thousand feet. You said you said. So about. What uh, that? Three thousand yeah. meters. Yeah, about three thousand meters. Yeah, about three thousand meters. So they got a good. Right. Or they would be descending to three thousand meters as a right. Yeah, exactly. Area. We're not gonna get hair splitting on it. You need something to be able to visually recognize the target. Well, once once they see, they would then you know descend further to to VID. Right. If they live that long. Indeed. Was it the sea dart that had the longest range? Wolf. There weren't that many oh. there. There's sea dart um. definitely out here. Let me take a look at that real quick. Um, I don't mind showing you. Yeah, I don't mind showing you this. Uh, the sea dart had 25 nautical mile range. Sea cat had only 2.5. The sea wolf. Mm. The sea wolf. wolf was actually pretty short range, but it had yeah, no. very high uh, air to air capability. So this was the newest one. And as I made a note here, they. They, uh, the British had software issues with that, by the way, if you remember. And what was really cool is they had the manufacturer. The manufacturer actually went went with the task force and uh, helped them fix their software issues. Um, but on the Argentine side, your C-Cat, again, pretty, and that's only on the Bagrano. It's 2.5 nautical miles, but the C-Dart is your longest yeah. SAM capability. Sorry, I should have led with that. So you got these guys plotted. When are these guys getting here? And that's when we need to launch the other ones. Even if we don't get this exactly right, we'll adjust it if we have to. I'm <laughs> kind of eyeballing this. And this is why air planning <laughs> coordination over the South Atlantic was quite difficult, even when you don't have the wind and the cold in your face here. Um, so they're going to get there at about the... I don't know, it actually works out pretty well. They're going to get there at about the next half hour mark, so that's that's when I'll do it. All right, let's do this by. And by the way, this kind of coordination in this in this era would have been almost impossible. I mean, even for a Western force, it would have been very difficult to do this kind of coordination. And this is. Let me show you. What's cool about this is you can actually put leaders on it too, and it'll tell you how far they're going to go. Um, Peter, mm -hmm. we're assuming that the weather is the same over the whole area. Is that like when you say the, the wind's coming from the west? Yes. Going to the west, rather. Let's take a look at the scenario real quick. What had I said? Two seven zero point seven. Yeah, every half an hour it's supposed to change. Potentially. Let me see what that weather change says. Give me one second. In 
And this is the, by the way, this is the scenario book that this comes from. I, I will, I'll do all my pitching towards the end. Just to thank the sources, if you will. But there's a weather ch Let me see. say to do it every hour. Oh, what's he can be becalmed? Yeah. <laughs> what's really cool is that this this has the exact weather for every day. For the, this is a really good resource, by the way. I'll, I'll, I'll plug it later. And give you, but it has the exact weather for the entire conflict. Alright. Um, so, It's Thanks also for. cloudy, so unless the unless the satellites are okay. down looking radar, you, you didn't I'm gonna go ahead and visual on the satellites. If no objections or other changes, I'm gonna I'm gonna increment this in three minutes so that I can more appropriately take them off there. All right. All right, sure. So I'm just gonna go. Yeah, about now. We're about 1454 on May 1st. Um, your tracker will now take off here. <clears throat> Let's give it a better designation. Da -da 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 -da. Probably more considered in ASW, but it does have the source. Key. All right, so let's go ahead and test them out. And I'm gonna have to look up their their speeds here in a moment. Where, which direction would you like to go? Pretty much, uh, I'd I'd send him to the east northeast. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, I kind of like that. At least for that. At least Maybe, for that yeah. thing. Yeah. And that so that like, way these guys are basically... And then... And then the, given these guys are right. screening, if you will. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the intention is that for this... And then have him... Okay, go ahead, and then you want to do what? And then I'd turn, have him turn on his radar somewhere around the... The 50... I guess that's... Uh, yeah, 50 nautical mile the, marker. The 50 line, yeah. yeah. So right about there, yeah. About here. Say that yeah, about there. Turn on SS. If you ever want to mark things, you just mark them. And now we gotta go look up the speed. I don't remember the speed of the trackers. Probably about 250. They are one. Wow, really? 114. Wow. Yeah. 114. Yeah, that seems a little low, doesn't it? Oh, um, uh, it's a piston. I guess it's a piston engine. Yeah, it, it is. They're, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Unless you want to go high. Uh, no, 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 no. That's that's. Let me zoom in on this. Piston engine. Better, you're probably about ten. Probably about ten thousand feet. Is, is uh, one forty four. Uh, you know, one forty four. One forty four. It didn't. <laughs> wow, that was weird. Okay, but if you want to go high, you can go a little quicker. That's. But you're also a much better uh, target. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm geez. thinking the South Atlantic looks a very cold ocean just now. Yes. Uh. Oh man, yeah. These these guys are you know they've they're, um, yeah. They aren't getting paid enough in flight. And pay. one thing is, let me save this just in case. I should have been doing that the whole time. So. You know the. the <sighs> one second. I mean, 140. That's that's not. I mean, that's faster than a World War One fighter, but not by much. Yeah, they're they're large and they have a bunch of equipment on them 
I don't know right. if they factored yeah, that into a, that, a, but um, a, they have the newer. There's, the, there's, uh, there's probably a lot of drag in those things. You know, those, those big radial yeah, engines probably a lot of drag. About three three eighty. Yeah, but this is a World War. Uh, this is only slightly faster than a World War One fighter, which they, they, they max one, out about one twenty. Yeah, World War One. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's it's like yeah, you're faster than, <laughs> but not by much. So we'll ah. see that. We can adjust. We can adjust things. Why don't we? Why don't we keep going three minutes? All okay. right, just before before At least I better than World War One. They had a. <laughs> I think World War One planes had. All right, so I need to speed. I need to make an adjustment. <laughs> Um, actually, after two more minutes, I need to make some adjustments on the blue side here in a moment, based on what schedule I gave myself. Uh, all right, so three, ready, da, 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 da. All right, so we're just gonna go three minutes. Look a little closer. At what's going on? These guys are gonna go much quicker, as you can see the white leader lines right here. Uh, let's keep going. These guys are speeding over. What's really cool is this will automatically update. As you can see, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, just again, if you ever want me to stop and change anything or start things moving or bring anything else up, yell, all right? All right, so we're going, we're going, we're going. At this point, I'm gonna s just, I'm going to, I need to plot something on the blue side real quick. I'm going to stop sharing just for a moment. How do I stop that? Why is that? Oh, let me stop sharing just The for only a thing I was thinking we could do is actually put the Skyhawks and the Canberra to go north ahead of the slow tracker just to make sure if there's anything there we pick it up first because I like the idea of the tracker when it lights up the radar giving us a big spread whereas the Canberra and the Skyhawks are more kind of ins if we find things yeah the, actually the tracker radar is only like 18 miles I mean it's nothing <laughs> it's surprisingly bad <laughs> I, was, I was getting I was inadvertently excited then <laughs> yes, I was. I, I mean, a P three, you know, a, a, a Navy P three would have lit up the whole area. You know, and it's like it's like you know, two hundred miles. Uh, this, this, and I was, I, 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 I thought, well, maybe not two hundred miles, but you know, hey, give me, give me fifty, <laughs> eighteen. It's <laughs> yeah. That, that, I mean, on the British side as well, the lack of an AWAC equivalent yes, was really absolutely. hurting them, yes. and. And by the end of the conflict, they had ad hoc radar into a Sea King to be a pretend AWAC, mm -hmm. uh, just on the basis of the, they just needed it. It was at the Skywalker. Oh man, yeah, this is. Yeah, the the uh, I'm just I'm uh, I I thought this. I mean, I truly thought it was going to be better than 18 miles. I mean, that's that look, that's better than the eyeball, but not a whole lot. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, the picks Shorter can get the certain things the, better, but then the, uh, exercise. just bear with me as I play. Yeah. There's, there's a couple scheduled planned things. No, here. no, no problem. No problem. So, and um, pretty much at this uh, point, I'm going to open things up here in a moment after I plan these. Okay. Things, but. And so, uh, everybody who's who's on, what do you all do in the real world? Living in retirement. <laughs> oh, nice. I'm a software uh, person in the NHS, in the uh, National Health Service. Oh, okay. I, I design systems. Okay. Okay. The last year has been keeping uh, you I'm, busy. I'm retired too. <laughs> or not. Not hope, but sorry. Uh, I'm just here to hope that yeah. someone finds me useful. Yeah, I, I'm... I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm retired. Um, uh, former, actually former Navy. Um, Me too. Um, so, Check my award on uh, chat. I'm sorry. What? Check my award on the chat. Yeah. I, I was actually a participant. In 
Oh, you were? Yes, yes. That's, that's, that's where, where were you at? Where, 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 uh, I, I, uh, oh, okay. I was, I was at a ground station. Okay. My, my dad was actually on Ascension, um, supporting... Um, <laughs> Supporting an Air Force Logistics unit operations. that was working out of Ascension. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, uh, there we had some EC 135s, I think it was, um, working out of Ascension. And so, uh, and he was he was just a flight surgeon working with them. I was in college, so I had uh, nothing to do with anything. Actually, so was I as a reservist. Uh, college was during the week. Reserves were during the weekends. Well, I was watching it on TV as a teenager. <laughs> yeah, it is a fascinating little, you know, I mean, just from the lessons learned. If you, if you ever had a chance to read uh, uh, Sandy, Sandy Howard, Sandy is that Woodward, 100 book? Days. Yeah. Woodward, Woodward, I'm sorry, Woodward, yeah. his good book. That's 100 a great days. book. Days. Absolutely great. terrific book. That's a great book. That's the first book yeah, I that, read on the conflict, what? and it really... It really attracted me to just learn more about it, and just I really liked his. He was he was self-deprecating where he needed to be, right? It was kind of it was a very mm. very honest memoir, I thought, somewhat. Uh, of course, I've read other things it, that says he was kind of a he's a little bit he could go he could rub people the wrong way, um, you know. So so you always have to take it with a grain of salt when you when you're reading somebody's memoir. But uh, um, I thought it was pretty honest, right? So. With the operation, it seemed to be, as I say in Britain, a game of two halves. There was the sea side of things, and then the land side of things. And um, the books that I've read, kind of subsequent to focusing on the naval side of things, there was a lot of inter-rivalry, uh, which worked against, dare I say, the smooth, frictionless operation. And it's incredible that... Uh, Certainly in the land operation, who gets to move next seem to be fought as hard back in London than actually on the uh, the ground in the Malvinas and the Falklands. Um, You're saying they did not have unity of command on <laughs> Well, it was a case of the regimental British system really worked against us there. Uh, and it, it wasn't just a rivalry of uh, comp competition. It was um, uh, what was really, what's the word, a bit of a shocker was the, what the paras and the commandos could do and what the guards couldn't do, which was effectively yomp. Um, at, least, which, at least it wasn't the payroll out of the regimental commander's own pocket. <laughs> in, the Nap <laughs> in the Napoleonic times. Uh, yeah, but uh, that was, from my understanding, that, that was such a, the 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 yomping, That was such a um, difficult terrain. You know, yes. they, they, these were these were largely mechanized troops. They weren't they weren't trained yeah. for that. The guards were expected and, and to so, fight the Soviets. Yeah, in a mechanized infantry. Right. You know, and and, and you know, it's and so in fairness, they just they weren't they hadn't been trained mm. or equipped. You know their their equipment was not designed to be carried by back. You know, yeah, over rugged terrain. Um, so, and and unfortunately, it cost them at. Uh, Bluff I can't Bluff, think of yeah. the sound where the surrogate. Yeah, where where they uh, got bombed. You know that was. Uh, okay, I think that was are, Bluff Cove. Was it? Things are about to get hairy. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So okay. this is unblinded. Well, yeah. Let me see what we got here. Blind, I think All right. Disabling of a. Of a British carrier was critical here because the, the ground forces depended upon the British air, air support. I'm going to move the. Um, yes. Um, move the scale particularly well. when the Atlantic conveyor was hit with all the um, equipment on board, the the heavy lift um, helicopters. Suddenly, oh, yeah, we went horrible. from the air mobile concept to that it's on the ground um all right as you can see here things are getting interesting 
Um, hopefully you can see everything. Oop, can you see everything that. okay? I've, I've unblinded us because we're getting about to about 7.45 now. Ooh, I, I knew we were going to run out of time, okay. but it's okay. This is fine. Um, as you can see, Belgrano did stay pretty well away from Conqueror. Conqueror, Conqueror was, right. um, was yeah, patrolling this area. It's nowhere near it. I thought this was a great Steven. idea, first of all. You, you actually saved... The you see the so that, that's that's the connections 2021 <laughs> no, award <laughs> but, but, but but spartan is going to get a shot at her when mm -hmm. she does her high speed run it it will and this could get interesting here with uh spartan coming pretty pretty darn close to san luis uh although timing wise i don't think it'll be there by the time um we had said these guys were going to go parry uh def at that point so we'll see how that plays into it too because it has a cap going right over it right there you see that <clears throat> so that could be interesting um, so the, the British forces have launched four Harriers on two cap missions um, one is going in this direction one is going in this direction okay so this we're gonna start probably getting air search contacts and then your tracker um, let's go look at that tracker again if it has any AS capability it does not which I found always interesting alright so what is its range yeah, it is not gonna have uh, now what the tracker will get is potentially radio contact from the Skyhawk and the Canberra flights as to what they are seeing, right? I'm gonna. Uh, there might be a little right. bit, of, and, and it'd be able to redirect its, yeah, its pattern based on that. Absolutely, and that's kind of why you delayed it here, pretty much. Um, so let's go forth and kind of talk this through. Um, again, everybody's so. And this, <laughs> oddly enough, somewhat historic. Uh, these guys are still probably about 200 miles away. That's almost almost exactly historical. Um, but we're still only an hour and a half in, right? As far as game time. So, Historical in so far that the Argentini didn't didn't keep the carrier report. All right. So so what we're gonna do is I'm just trying to think as these take off. What is the Skyhawk's air search capability? Did I keep it here? No. Yeah, there it is, right here. What is its air search capability? It does what? Wow, really? Yeah, it doesn't have it doesn't have a uh, much of a radar. No, it only has RWR first. If any, if any at all. Which basically, just as it says here, it only notifies. Yeah, no radar then. Wow. Okay. All right, and then Kim. It just has a, a radar warning. Rise. Wow. So we're basically just targets. Well, no, no. So didn't we have? Ready. I thought we had. Uh, we we didn't have we didn't have Skyhawks with them. We had. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Daggers. You're right. You're right. And I did that wrong. That's all right. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe these are the. That's okay. What the heck happened there? There's like a ghost image. It's interesting because the planning of the super untaunted, super was it super uh, missions. It was the cap and the direction of the cap from the Hermes and the Invincible, which gave away. Mm -hmm the area where the carriers were coming from because mm -hmm. there was a nice Argentinian radar in Port Stanley that, and combined with the I think it was the Neptunes early on but the war the Neptunes out the and the, certainly the Sheffield attack the intelligence came from indirect plotting rather than visual or direct uh, contact oh my god so I just want to make sure that, okay, so on the Harrier, though, they have LDS. Well, that's the thing. When you have something like, like, like the Harrier, if you know what direction they're coming from, they're so short-legged, you got at least yep. a, a reasonable shot at, at where their base is. Um, and even though not, they're I mean, not to, always. That's not a dip. Yeah. They tried to stay low and then climb, but it, it, 
still vectored. I mean, it was so, a, a protractor uh, combinations and people thinking. So I'll still even they'd call be, out that the, what they would be doing. But yeah, you know the. The, well, hair, the, the shards, the blue fox is not very capable either. Right? Um, so again, most of these most of these aircraft are small. The Canberra is large, so at best they have a 35 nautical mile range. This, this is the physical limitation of the blue fox on the Shar, on the mm. uh, Sea Harrier. So let's go ahead and put that on here. Well, if we have verification of the invisible, I, I should just launch, go after it. Mm. It, 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 it's see. either depending upon gamer input. If, uh, if any of you are interested, or if any of you are interested in modern naval combat, the uh, command modern operations by uh, Matrix is actually very good uh, for um, uh, for this kind of thing. If you ever played it, it's it's actually command. a version of it sold professionally. Modern operations. Modern operations. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll put. Yeah, let me let me go ahead and I'll send you the web page. Um, and, and I can highly recommend it. it not just be, I actually was one of the beta testers. I, I'm still on the team, but leaving that aside, it's 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 actually um, it's actually um, um, it's sold professionally too. Uh, there's a bunch of. Uh, um, hang on, let me get you a link here. I think yeah, it's been I have evaluated the, I have in the, the Fight Club, and, uh, the British Army Fight Club. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Kind of. I, I think that's one of the software packages from uh, Matrix Games. Cause it's Slytherin as well, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Slytherin. Uh, it's Slytherin. Right. right. We're gonna. The, I'm going the, to. I'm going to advance circle. things. Yes. I'm going to advance things three minutes at a time. I put some uh, range circles on the Shar, the uh, uh, Sea Harrier units, just to kind of give you an idea how far their air surface physically can look at versus a large target, right? Um, definitely based on what... I just put it in me. Uh, definitely based on what their altitude is right now, there's not going to be a radar a radar line of sight issue, but they do have a... As you can see here, they have a... The Harrier has a physical limitation of its air search radar. Okay? All right, so we're going to continue. Any any objections to continuing? Any, any changes in nope. plots based on... You don't see this. He don't see that. No. He doesn't no. see this. And this just kind of gives you an idea how just, um, even, you know, especially with the number of units, especially with the lack of early warning. I can't remember who was saying that before. Uh, airborne, airborne early warning in particular, right? They don't know they're there. Nobody knows where anybody is, <laughs> at least for, until they run into each other. It, it, it. <clears throat> In the real world, we wouldn't see anything. The, our first indication of, issue, of an issue would probably be a radar hit from right. Port Stanley, actually. All right, on so some, some other things are, is of course, that the British have basically decrypted all of the communications for the Argentine command. So they knew when they left, they knew where generally they were going, right? Um, and then, but the Argentine, there's, there's rumor that Argentina had Soviet satellite imagery showing where the task group was as well so of course that would have been time delayed considerably probably they probably knew from soviet uh, imagery that not only the task group was there but that the amphibious uh task group was on its way right i would i i, I yeah they might have that been, hypothetically they, they might have gotten like rorstad or something like that right uh like a, a radar uh, but they specifically well, if they, yeah, they specifically launched right. during that time frame more often and put them in in line for these for this uh, lat long, you know, on a daily basis. So they definitely were gathering the information and more than likely giving it to the Argentine forces. Um, now, of course, the British were getting satellite information from 
you know, you know who, us, us A, and uh, and of course we were also help. Uh, of course, the naval command in London was doing a, a good amount of the decryption. Of course, part of the United States was too. Uh, we won't get too into that. Um, all right, let's keep going. Um, all right, this gets this is getting interesting here. getting tense yeah this is interesting so again we need to we'll see <laughs> this is kind of this is really interesting oh oh okay this is actually a feature not a bug which one the skyhawk let's stop the unit let's let's actually continue do you want to continue let's continue moving oh, oh, yeah, yeah. We'll replot it at this point. Yeah, yeah, I get I'm assuming your intention was to keep going here, right? Yeah, our intention was to keep going until we got into approximately 200 miles out, then we'd figure out which way to turn. Yeah, you're not going to get a visual here either. Let's just say continue movement. Okay. We picked up the... We have picked up the Kimbera to some here. The okay. sea harriers are aware of Canberra coming from in this direction. Alright, how far are we away and do we attack? Again, the sidewinder ranges. Okay, so that would be definitely a detection. So what what we would normally do from a from a double blinded perspective is this is what blue sees, right? Um at that point we would do this, we would modify this and make it visible to blue. We would not necessarily, yeah, we'd probably know course and speed, not altitude. Actually, at this point, we'd probably have a radar early warning of your radar. Um, you would only, you normally only would get that if I'm firing an, uh, an active radar homing missile at you, at least in this generation. Uh, these are like the okay. really early radar warning RWR systems, so I'll show you how it's depicted here. Um, let's see. Yes, absolutely. If I fire on you, yes, you would. <laughs> yes. Um, but uh, I wouldn't even get the. I had just been painted by your search radar. I wouldn't get that. No, not on not not on this generation of RWR. Nope. That. I've always questioned that, but that's how that's how the early, the early systems couldn't couldn't differentiate it. I, I don't necessarily understand the, the the physics behind that, but that's how it's done. Um, now what am I doing here? What was I looking for? All right, so at that oh yeah, modification of the observation perception. Okay, so again, this is this is literally this is what the British would say at this point, is they they see two air contacts, um, of a. They know they're. Uh, that's another thing. That's kind of an interesting thing when you're using like harpoon is that, uh, it depicts it pretty well. So, if you're in a Harrier and you pick up something at 30 knot nautical miles, what's what's the rule of thumb, right? 
what what would you know? You know it's a large contact, right? Because you know the capabilities of right. your radar. Right. Um, so you you know that you know that if the air contact was medium or small, that you wouldn't have picked it up yet. So you 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 have you would have the British would have the intel at this point that they have two larger aircraft spotted. Um, how would that change their actions? They would probably change their waypoints, right? I'm assuming that we would come in at you. They'd want to get a VID. Yes. It, I mean, it could be a civilian airliner, but they, they, probably not since it's flying, you know. Right. We're not... Rules of... The, RO, the ROE at this point is... Uh, is kind of like do what you want at this point. Um, if it's coming at you, fire. Well, actually, a actually, if you're going to use a sidewinder, you're going to get a VID anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's modify its waypoints. Let's just delete all. I think we're going to check you out. On these. Although it is an all-aspect missile, right? The AIM-9L. Yeah, the L is. Oh, the onboard computer on the NASA Hubble telescope went down. Okay, before oh, I continue. Oh, it did. Yeah. And they have been having trouble with that. But it finally, it, it did go completely down? It seems that the payload computer... Let's take a good look a, at the dagger, just to make sure we don't forget anything on the dagger here. Right, well, you know. I need a special tool. You see right here this note, this is what I was trying to just say before, is that... Right here first gen first gen RWR only notifies the aircraft under attack by radar guided weapons oh so it, I actually I won't even get a warning of your search radar at all <laughs> even when you're under attack because it's no. it's not even a radar guided correct so it, it, I just have to hope that my pilot spots you <laughs> right which I think which um, I don't even think I need to look up the rule uh, the visual rule but I think just based on the fact that we're at we're still in the afternoon this is GMT time um, yeah, so you're it, gonna it should see be. Them right. Let's see how far this is. All right, I'll see them coming. Yeah, right. Uh, the eyeball isn't that wonderful. Probably around right here. Let's, let's just let's let's keep moving. But before I do anything else, you, uh, the tracker knows it's being. Uh, well, no, it hasn't been radioed anything yet, right? Um, so All let's right. continue. Ooh, that's interesting. In trouble when the pilot jumps first. I don't even think you would have seen him. I mean, I'll let everybody kind of co-judge that, but I can undo it and redo it if you want. I'm gonna undo it. You see this? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Hey, no, at that range, I wouldn't see you. I mean, unless there's a contrail or something cool. like that. Let's watch this. This is Sharky this Ward is doing time. his tricks, then. This will give us a better visual. It's actual real time. Ah, I think. I think by the skin of his teeth, he's not gonna be detected. He could take any. He could take them out. Um. I. Th uh, of course, these guys are pretty high. These guys are probably low altitude now. I, I didn't depict that here anymore. Um. Do they? Let's take another. These guys are the mirages. I can't. Yeah. It makes you. Yeah. As you, as you dig into these rules and how and how some of these earlier, it's kind of earlier system aircraft are. They're they're not. You know, like like this mirage will not see this area. And at this point, if you look yeah, right probably here, probably not because the, the, the wing. Well, yeah. I mean, unless he's jinking uh, a little bit, he's not going to see it. And I mean, I'll, point, I'll, I'll grant you that. I mean, he's got him. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would probably rule that at least one of those is going to be shot down. Does anybody Hopefully disagree on that? Okay. I, mean, I, 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 I would actually, I'd actually go with that. I mean, um, now, I, th 
obviously once it's fired they're notified um then these guys yeah, all know. bets are off then um so the again the assumption is at least one of these is shot down but then immediately you have a chain reaction right these guys absolutely know um i would i would think they'd hightail a little bit away and let these guys oh yeah they would scrap. There we go. um but let's yeah. let's let's not lose track of everything else going on take this guy off i don't know what this was like a extra thing that got in here all right um very interesting and now this guy is going to start making a beeline right for they don't necessarily right. know where it's at but they i think it's pretty i mean i'll, I'll let you make that co-judgment with me if they're being attacked in this area they're probably within 60 nautical miles yeah almost almost the dot right the, given given the, the the legs of a harrier they'll know to go in that direction i think it's a safe assumption you know once once they get some kind of of indication and and it's really uh, at this, it's, it, but but then again are they going to go right into the teeth of a harrier probably not but but they'll they'll head in that general direction of course i just crashed it Okay, so <laughs> on that note, um, we're reaching 8 p.m. It's probably very late in uh, the UK. Uh, this is going to crash here in a moment, and I'm really ticked off because I didn't save it again, did I? Um, boop. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's okay. That's we're, we're kind of at a... Look, I enjoyed it. Uh, I, I hope maybe I talked too much, but I hope that everybody else did too. Yeah, I just what I want to play through. What I what I'm I'm going to let go through here real quick. I just want to see if these guys would get any closer. That that that's what I that's what I would that's what I figured we'd get to the point where we had some sort of air contact. More than likely, that tracker that came down might have survived. If he, I, I almost would suggest at that point he kind of makes a a good a good curve and and lets the uh the dagger hopefully keep the harrier in in uh you know busy <coughs> i i just the, the question at hand the questions that have arisen then is how how far do you push your trackers forward like mm. when do they when do they start losing their uh, when does it make the most sense to to move forward in that regard so um, we had we had questioned whether or not they should have done much in the way of capping from this ta from their task group from the British task group, right? Um, because that is a really uh, expensive resource to lose, right? It just so happened right. that. Right. I... Go ahead. I mean, just a, a, had I been in charge of the battle group, okay, I would have seen what I could get. I get the tracker out because that is an expensive asset, and there's not too many, and they don't build them anymore. Um, but what that does is that tells me that he's further south than I thought he'd be. And so we'd reset. Uh, I, I would I would try to get another cap up, and we'd you know I probably the Canberra's would probably get away because um, they got the speed I tracker. So. I might get away if I got. A, Got moving in time because the Harriers don't got legs anyway, and and uh, then we'd reset and try it again with the cap. And this time you wouldn't catch them by surprise because they know. And the Harriers have expended a lot of fuel in that dogfight. And, and the Harriers have expended. They're going to be, you know. Right, so. and so in a couple hours we'd 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 be doing it. We'd be doing the same thing again. Um, Port Stanley radar. We didn't really play with that a whole lot. Uh, right, and I, I, I depicted it as a, it was, it's basically the, yeah, unfortunately the scenario didn't really provide that to me, but um, I'm trying to think about how that would even play into this. They, they probably would have had it. it it's probably, yeah, realistically, they probably wouldn't have had the comms to have, to have affected it. Uh, mm -hmm. But. We, I'd just be resetting, and we do it again. Now I have a, a generalized area. I just need to have specific targeting, 
And so, frankly, I'd be putting I'd be putting bombs on everybody on a land, and you know, in three hours we'd be at it again. So what I wanted to do here well, is to answer your question. I, I really enjoyed it, and I do appreciate it. It's getting a bit late, so I'm gonna have to out. But like I say, it's that cat and mouse, and it's what didn't happen was the task force wasn't engaged in a persistent way. Right. They had one shot at it, right. but the weather yep. seemed to take it out of dare I say mathematical reason. The the pilots were ready to go, and it was that if they'd have gone. Immediately non I think they, uh, they would have come they, back, but they would the, have the probability of their. I think they did, they they computed it at if they sent six of them, two of them would make it back, but that was mm. that was only, you know, fully loaded, fully loaded. Two would have survived, and I think they computed that at least maybe possibly two thousand pounders would have hit one of yeah. the carriers. Um, would that have taken it out? Which that would have done it. It probably yeah, would have done it. Kill. Yes, and one of the reasons that that probably would have taken them out is they had so much ammunition on the deck, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And not to mention their air units and o overloaded with extra uh, helos as well. Any number of fuel. And, yeah, fuel it'd fires. definitely be a mission kill. Yeah, I think I think they would have damaged. Um, so unfortunately, we just unfortunately I, I knew we weren't going to have enough time to get all the way to that, but. I really like this move. I I haven't seen anybody do this, and I and I like this move. Um, this this could get interesting, um, particularly if they can skirt the coast and and kind of still maintain. Like as as you've seen here, I was kind of depicting the blue side moving northward in a tracking motion. They Belgrano would have probably gotten through there. Of course, there I had depicted that other cap. Uh, and they probably would have continued to do a cap on a certain time frame. Mm, eventually, especially in dusk. Uh, this is at GMT again, so we're talking still late midday afternoon. Um, of course, by the time they get here, it wouldn't be that time. But if Belgrano timed itself pretty well with nighttime, mm -hmm. uh, and then meeting them up at nighttime from a different from a different um, axis of yeah. threat. Yeah, a lot I of mean, stuff. Going back to 100 days, that's exactly what Woodward was fearing. Right, and that that's, that's what pincer, it that's was It was coming from Tudor, because prior to his deployment in the South Atlantic, early on in the chapter, that, uh, the chapter of the book, he describes kind of a friendly war game against American carrier unit when he was the frigate captain, and he had a squadron of six frigates, and they were coming in uh, from different angles. Uh, so he played cat and mouse from the uh, the mouse point of view. So, yeah, and the and politics. You, um, just him, overall, I think y'all did well keeping this task group uh, back until you found out more inf more information. Mm. I thought that was a good move too. Um, yeah, yeah well, I would. I would just like you suggested. I would actually have once we, since we have an idea of where he's at. I'd be hugging the coast at high speed because it just it eliminates one angle of attack for me from a sub. Right. You know, the the shoreward side. And so I can I can I can layer my, my ASW assets, my pitiful ASW assets on the on the seaward side, run at high speed and you know and and if I can have four or five task groups getting in range, they don't have to be perfectly coordinated, but it causes a huge problem for the British in juggling assets on you know, where to go. Yeah. And if I get just two of those four to, to fire with near simultaneous times on tops, you know, I'm going to get hits. At this point, the, the British task force, it's going to be heading east, I would have thought. Yeah, it probably would probably more head like this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I kind of, I mixed it up. Um, I kind of wanted to move them uh, horizontally, if you will, a little bit more than historically. Um, let's see what happens. I wanted to see, let's do this as 30. I just wanted to see if these guys met. That's my main thing. I, just, I was very curious. Yeah, the other thing is, is, is once you start running air operations against Stanley, once you start trying to do your, your, your pre-invasion bombardment, you've got a problem. Because now you have to do air ops, and so your, your, your cap is going to be reduced. You know, you're, you, you've got flight deck issues, and, and you're more vulnerable. 
um, just because of your, your juggling of the flight ops and your uh, mm -hmm. so you know it's if we had more time ideally I would have wanted to wait until <clears throat> until about then you know until a day or two and and once you start hitting Stanley then I got a real good idea about where you are where you're coming from you know and but we didn't have time to play it that way but if you get a chance, try that that command. It's an expensive game, but when you if you they, they do sell it on sale occasionally. Um, it's it's I think it's an eighty dollar game, um, but they when they do sell it on sale, they'll they'll knock it down by fifty percent. So and one thing that, that happened a couple times a year. One thing I'm noticing is that these guys are not going to get they're not going to get close enough to detect each other. It was it's extremely no, difficult for what, some reason to find one. But once you once you start bombarding, once you start doing air ops against uh, Stanley, then we'll have a rough idea where your where your uh, uh, where your box is, and you just vector the submarine into that. Of course, you'd vector your 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 nuke boat into a protective box too. So yeah, the, the San Luis seems to be all, almost within cruising distance. Then get within the right. Yeah, the thing with. The thing with um, they would have to have some sort of intel, and we had actually called out the fact that they would potentially periscope and radio and do a radio mast or ESM radio mast. Here, they do have a surface search right. radar mast. And stuff. They would ri they would probably only do that. Well, it's actually the wee time in the morning at that point. Um, but yeah, um, and then come back and so that the only way that they would again reposition themselves appropriately, either guess. <laughs> Or get some more information from from other units. Um, so it's, Woodward it's was really quite um, how not to word critical, but he was the the diesel boats did worry him, and again he was a submariner and he knew the the, the threats there. But they the SW, quiet. yeah, they were extremely quiet. Yeah, I, I mean. It, there was the thoughts that we might have detected them, but we were never sure. Uh, and, I th and I think that we were actually chasing whales most of the time. They even thought the... Um, yeah, they, they, they actually... They burned a whole bunch of uh, Mark 46s um, yes, chasing right. whales. But, but by the same yeah. token, you know, the, 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 they never got off a... The, the Argentinians never got off an effective attack. You know, I mean, they, they say they did, but they didn't. So right, and another thing, they they later had what they think was a POS sub contact, and they they thought they got it down to the point where they thought it might be a U.S. or a Soviet submarine in the area here. <laughs> so that was there's still right. uh, there was still at least one or two unknown contacts that were very very likely subsurface units, but not of the belliger belligerents in the conflict. So wow. it's, yeah, so it's all there. There's some speculation that the Soviets. Uh, were probing the area to determine how well they could they could be remain undetected, which hey, oh, that's yeah. a very dangerous thing. Yes, that's a, yeah. but hey, you know, if you want to prove it, prove it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I thought that's that was a very fun. Dangerous um, game to play. This was kind of a that is a brilliant. That's a brilliant third player in a two-player game. <laughs> I like this, this, the sound of that. Are we still on May May first on this? Um, we are creeping into May second as we get, and again, unfortunately, it crashed. Okay, so, <laughs> but so the this, general bell ground has until the afternoon of the second. So if you can make it past the, the afternoon, think, it it lived longer. Yeah, the only thing, of course, I didn't <laughs> I didn't retrack it. But if he if he had uh, retracked here, that actually could have. I think that mm -hmm. I, that would have worked pretty well if they stayed without being otherwise detected. That's the only thing they probably would have to stay about. 20 to 25 nautical miles out to remain not visually detected here. Um, yeah, that's a good. That's oh, a good idea. All sorts of noise. Yes, sure, and that would have. Uh, if you made a bunch maybe, of noise, you might have attracted the attention of these these two, right? Um, eventually, and that would have drawn that would have drawn the subsurface units towards this task group, as opposed to Spartan this was the nuke. Is that right? These are all nuclear. Uh, splendid as well. Yeah. 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 These and are, each each of those squares is twenty five miles. These are 
25 nautical miles at this at this at this zoom level. That's right, that, boy, that that'd be a long range. That that'd be yeah. really long for a detection. Yeah. That, that, they wouldn't have picked up the sound. Right. So there had they were to ha I I think what might have happened would be that second that secondary cap or even a further a, a third cap. I had planned third and fourth and fifth, but they might have potentially visually seen them creeping along the here. So. Any number of what ifs here. I, I thought y'all did well. Um, well. Again, it's a short period of time. Like um, I, I like the idea of these mind of fields. Go ahead. There was a certain amount of insecurity on our. Um, so with. So this was kind of a teaser. Um, I'm hoping at some point to be able to do a full. <laughs> If, if if people are willing, uh, maybe even for the uh, as far as the 40th anniversary next year, I might I might run a full I might run a full size uh, double blind naval creek spiel similar to this. Um, it's really it's kind of difficult to find enough people willing to spend hours and hours at this, but as you can <laughs> see, it goes by like a flash, right? Um, yeah. So, in. Peter, I'm going to disappear. If you've got any resources, if you put it in the, yeah, the yeah, chat, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I can pick it up tomorrow. That's brilliant. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you very much. I've got to disappear. Oh, it's been a pleasure. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Cheers. All right, everybody. I enjoyed it. It's been a pleasure. I'm going to, I'm going to close <laughs> up shop, but uh, that was fun. And I hope it was fun for you. And uh, Yep, it was fun. Uh, full, full double blind Ooh. with me not talking would, of course, be better. Um, but of course we had a limited amount of time and I didn't have enough, uh, double or triple judges to, to, to do it, do it more properly. But, uh, I, I had fun. I hope you Same did too. Same time next year. Yep. It was interesting to observe. Yep. Yes. Nice. Thanks y'all. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Yep.